Good evening. My name is Troy McIntosh, and I'm the head of school at Worthington Christian Schools, and I want to thank each of you tonight for joining us. We are broadcasting live from uh, our studio at Worthington Christian High School, and my goal tonight is to update our community on our Forward Together Capital campaign and give you guys some, what I think is some very exciting news uh, about the campaign. And uh, uh, certainly tonight, we want this to be a chance for uh, you to respond uh, with questions. So if anything that I say tonight generates questions uh, for you, please feel free to type them in the comment section uh, of the post tonight. And we won't answer those live tonight, but uh, we will get back to you within uh, the next several days uh, with answers to your questions as we can. So thanks again for joining us tonight. Um, my goal tonight is to present you with three takeaways and uh, kind of the three main ideas uh, for tonight. Uh, the first one is that we have been able to move the timeline for portions of our phase of the phase two of our campaign up into the phase one. The most significant which of being is that we are going to be consolidating our campuses from three campuses to two campuses now within our phase one of our campaign. This, I'll talk about each of these in a little bit more detail. Uh, that's the first, the consolidation down to two campuses. The second is that we are at a point in our campaign where we are ready to break ground immediately after we secure financing from our lender. And uh, that's not a done deal. But uh, as soon as we are able to do that, uh, we are in a position to begin breaking ground and uh, start construction of the 31,000 square feet of new space on the, our Lazelle Road campus. I'll be sharing more details about that tonight also. And then lastly, I want to share with you that there are still opportunities uh, to be involved in uh, what is really a historic initiative uh, for WC. And this is something that uh, I think is going to be a watershed event in the history of our school. And I'm going to be sharing with you uh, how you can still get involved uh, with that, because certainly uh, this is, has been a WC community-wide effort. And so I'll be sharing a little bit more about that also. So let's get right into the first of those three takeaways, and that is the consolidation of our school from three campuses down to two campuses. Uh, with the uh, completion of our construction, um, we will be able to immediately uh, reorganize Worthington Christian into a grade 7 to 12 upper school and a grades K to 6 lower school. The upper school will be located on what is currently our middle school campus, but which after the completion of our construction will have 31,000 additional square feet on it, which is enough to house 7th through, through 12th grade and still grow by uh, approximately 10 to 20 new students uh, in those grade levels. At the same time, we would be moving toward a lower school, which would house kindergarten through 6th grade, and that would take place at our current high school campus. Um, kindergarten through second grade would be in the administrative center building and grades three through six would be on uh, the, the high school side um, of the campus. And uh, so we're excited about many things that that offers us. And again, I'll talk about uh, some of the details about that uh, tonight. If I wanna share with you some floor plans and some ideas of what that might look like. So when you look at uh, the floor plan uh, that you see on the slide now, this would be the lower level of our administrative building. And this is the building at 6675 Worthington Galena Road where our district offices are housed now. The lower, this, are, this is currently houses our administrative offices at our high school. But as you can see, we would convert the lower level of this uh, building into three kindergarten classrooms and three first grade classrooms. Currently, those six classrooms uh, house high school uh, classes, but uh, we will convert those into kindergarten and first grade, as well as a large space in the middle that would serve kind of as a multi-purpose and gathering space. That's where uh, students on this, in this building would eat lunch. Uh, they would have uh, a chance to use that for some play space, 
uh, gathering spaces and so forth uh, that would be uh, used for, for a variety of reasons. Um, the second floor, the main floor uh, of this building, as you can see, would house three second grade classrooms, as well as our auditorium and our, a library, uh, a lower school office, as well as all of our district offices would remain where they are. So let me walk you through each of these. You see the large auditorium section. That is where this building would have their chapel services. It's also where we would hold music classes. Uh, you will see three currently high school classes, that classrooms that we would convert into second grade rooms. We would, this building would have its own library, its own intervention space, and its own office. So we would have an elementary school administrator housed in this, uh, this building also. Our art classes would take place on the third floor of the, uh, of the building. This currently is where our high school art studios are. So it would be an easy transition into um, the, uh, an elementary art space. We also have room for some building-wide storage there. This building would be entirely self-contained. So our kindergarten, first graders, and second graders would reside entirely within this building during the school day. They would have all of their services there, lunch, library, intervention, special area instructions would all take place there as well. Across the street from that is where we would house our third through sixth grade, uh, third through sixth grades of the lower school. <clears throat> if you look at the floor plans for this building, you will see that we have three classes for each grade third through fifth grade, and we have we'll have four classes for sixth grade. Our sixth grade tends to be larger than our fifth grade. That is a, a year that we have a lot of new students income. Uh, come into Worthington Christian, and so we uh, will have room for four sixth grade classes there. You will see that the third grade classroom at the top of the uh, floor plan next to that sixth grade room <coughs> will need to be constructed. That's one of the renovation uh, components to this plan. Uh, that is currently a large open multi-purpose facility that we would um, construct a third grade classroom out of. That would give us the extra classroom that we would need uh, in there. But you can see we will have a, a self-contained gymnasium. Uh, we would have a cafeteria, a full service kitchen. Uh, we would have a library that is about double the size of our current elementary library. We would have office space and uh, as well as um, intervention space uh, for um, our intervention department. Now this particular plan brings with it a number of advantages uh, to our school. The most uh, important of which is a more convenient location for our families. One of the biggest issues with our current locate with our current elementary school location is that it's too far south and far too many of our families are telling us that uh, they're now coming from Delaware County and that's uh, too big of a drive. They want to come to WC but they're going to join us in middle school. So the move north out of our current location gets us into uh, more of the heart of our demographic region and a more convenient um, opportunity for uh, families to attend WC. It also reduces the number of campuses that a family may have students on. Um, and so rather than families being split between two or three campuses, that may be now they're all on the same campus or maybe just on two different campuses, reducing the commute and uh, the transportation uh, between our different buildings for families. So that is a huge issue. We really expect to see more families attracted uh, to WC by it, and those families that are already here uh, have a con more convenient uh, commute. Over half of our families now come to uh, WC from Delaware County. Uh, this is a far more convenient location for them than all the way down at Westview. The second big benefit that it brings is opportunities for enhanced collaboration uh, among our faculty. So for the first time, we would have those seven grade levels housed on the same campus and opportunities, particularly for our kindergarten uh, teachers and our sixth grade teachers to interact, collaborate, and plan with uh, the first through fifth grade teachers. I can't underestimate uh, how important having kindergartners back onto our elementary campus is in terms of teacher planning and collaboration. They've largely been uh, detached from our elementary school for uh, over 20 years now, 
and it has created some significant issues that we believe this is going to help solve. So we're excited about that. We also believe that bringing sixth graders out of kind of a middle school, upper school concept back into an elementary setting is more developmentally appropriate uh, for sixth graders. We believe there's some research uh, that would back that up. And we love the fact of having them within this broad range of um, uh, lower school uh, setting. So we're excited about that also. Uh, those uh, who have been through the elementary school and understand some of the physical education limitations that we have will see that we have a much larger uh, space for our PE classes uh, now, uh, as well as uh, chapel and assemblies. Uh, we would have gathering space on both sides of the building uh, for those uh, things now, and we're excited about that improvement. Uh, we have uh, improved parking. <laughs> I think those parents who have been down for things like first day of school or class parties or any kind of assembly, grandparents day, where we have a large number of people who typically aren't uh, in the building, uh, understand the significant parking issues we have. And this campus moved to this lower school will provide us with um, almost triple the number of parking spaces that we currently have at our elementary school. Uh, the expanded library, uh, the lower school library on actually both sides, now that we have two, we would have a library on both sides, the one on the third to sixth uh, grade side uh, would be about double the size of our current elementary library, allowing us to expand our holdings to give more space for students to come in, find a book, spend some time reading it, more space for um, workstations for students who want to do research uh, online on a topic uh, that they may be uh, working on, the, the, the opportunities for our media center to grow and expand its uh, usage is uh, tremendous. Uh, each library will be kind of um, uh, age specific, so our K-2 library will be geared more toward uh, primary uh, grade students, while our uh, third to sixth grade library will be geared more for our intermediate students. So we're excited about having uh, both of those uh, things uh, to serve our students. And then lastly, it, it gives us an opportunity to grow. As I said, I, we believe that the biggest reason based on anecdotal reports as well as uh, exit surveys that we've had um, uh, that's been limiting our growth at the elementary school was our location. So by moving us north, we now not only have space for growth, but we also have um, a better um, opportunity to, to uh, provide access to the school because of its location. So we're excited about this K-6 to lower school. I had a chance to share this with our faculty earlier today, and I think they shared in that excitement also. Uh, if you'll take a look now, I want to share with you what our upper school would look like. And this is a 7 to 12 upper school that would be housed on our current middle school campus. On the slide that you're looking at, the image in red is existing facilities. The image in gold are what we plan to build as a result of the Forward Together project. So you'll see a number of things. On This is a, a first floor rendering. So you'll see on the west side of the building, that would be on the right side of the, uh, of the slide, you will see uh, a number of classrooms. Across the top in yellow, you'll see our art space. Uh, that would include vis um, uh, a new space for vocal music, a uh, new space for visual arts, as well as our ceramics classes. Built within that, that is, the detail isn't shown on here, but there will be new individual practice spaces in both our instrumental music room as well as our vocal music room. That would be soundproof places where individual students or small groups of students, sections could go to practice while the larger group uh, stays in the main area for rehearsal. Those practice rooms give our music um, program tremendous opportunities for uh, additional growth, skill development. Uh, we're excited about uh, the possibility that those students uh, would have to use that. If you look down uh, on the, uh, the middle portion of that, you'll see eight classrooms that are currently labeled as Bible and English classrooms. Those would be um, uh, classrooms that uh, uh, would allow us to house our students and, and put them into uh, outstanding learning facilities. At the very bottom of that, you'll see a new media center. That is a, uh, an expanded media center for our upper school. 
It's uh, be a large, open, airy feeling. It's got a lot of glass on the front and on the side. It's a story and a half high. Uh, it includes uh, additional space for our holdings, um, additional space for student research areas, as well as a new broadcast studio that would update uh, the studio that I'm currently broadcasting from. It would include some office space, storage space, and then a maker space also where we could, uh, that we have set aside for students who um, are uh, doing creative projects and producing um, uh, things for different classes that they're doing. So we're excited about that media center uh, also. If you look at the very top, you'll see an area labeled tornado shelter and weight room. Now, if you'll recall from the state of the school address, I mentioned that a change in our building code several months ago across the country required us to provide a tornado shelter, reinforced tornado shelter space, uh, because we are adding new space onto the school. Our original plan was for that, was for the art spaces that you see across the top to be reinforced to serve as that tornado shelter. The additional expense of reinforcing that area and providing the independent HVAC system, independent plumbing and water was going to be $410,000. Now that was $410,000 that didn't get us any additional square footage. All it did was provide a safe, it provided a safe space for our students, but no additional square footage. So as we even to talk with our architect, we thought, we realized we could solve two birds, we kill two birds with one stone on this. And we ended up developing this uh, weight room space off the south side of the building. That's the top part of the slide. We have, our, as our athletic program has really grown over the last three to five years in its usage of weight training, uh, we began to realize the weight training space that we had was not sufficient. So we have about a 900 square foot weight room that's currently in one of the red sections that you see there in the north athletic hallway or the, the top athletic hallway. But that wasn't sufficient. We would have teams in there sometimes that would have 30 to 35 students trying to work out, trying to train and, and lift, and it just wasn't sufficient. So we decided to build a 2,200 square foot weight room that we would connect to the current building and reinforce that space and make that our tornado shelter that has all the uh, size requirements and all of the, uh, the other requirements that a tornado shelter builds at a cost of only about $500,000. So for about $100,000 more, we pick up 2,200 square feet and uh, when we need it, we can convert the current weight room into a classroom that we could use for health or uh, you know that would be part of any student expansion that we might have. So we're excited that we found a uh, solution that really solves two problems that we have for a marginal uh, increase in the amount of money. If you look way over on the left-hand part of that slide, uh, you'll see what's we're call, what is labeled expanded kitchen. Uh, the current middle school kitchen needs an overhaul because it currently does not, it's not a full service kitchen. And so we are expanding that. There are some storage areas and some vending areas off to the side of that that we're gonna blow the walls out and expand the kitchen space. Um, the yellow area, the gold area that you see there would be coolers that we add on to the back end of that that would be accessible from inside the kitchen. That would be new square footage. But that new kitchen would allow us to serve the increased number of students that will be on that campus uh, uh, as, once the construction is completed and we move in as an upper school. If you look on the second floor, I'll share with you, this would be, if you remember where those English and Bible classrooms were, this second floor is directly above that. The second floor is mainly comprised of four uh, discipline-specific science labs. So you'll see we have a physics lab, a life sciences lab, a chemistry lab, and a general sciences lab that are going in there. Each of those rooms are about 1,200 square feet they have been designed uh, with input from uh, our uh, science department as well as our architect and school design specialist. We are excited about the possibilities that those classrooms bring to a 21st century science classroom. It will include uh, all the necessary uh, research areas, uh, tools, uh, chemical usage, uh, all the things that we will need uh, in each of those to, to really provide the kind of science program uh, that we want to give to our students. There's an additional uh, flex classroom 
uh, there as well, as well as a teacher workroom lounge area uh, that the teachers will be able to use uh, during their uh, uh, periods where they don't have classes. Now, when you talk about what does this bring us as an upper school, uh, and I would say, first of all, it is a tremendous increase in our school security. I've mentioned before that as I sit in my office and I see our students crossing, our high school students crossing Worthington Galena Road every day, um, I realize the security risk that comes with that. This would bring all of our students, K to 12, into a building in which that is secure, that is protected, and they don't have to leave that building during the school day at any time. Um, the, uh, there are security features that will be built into this as well, including the same kind of lockdown mechanisms that we have, the same kind of video camera, uh, security camera presence that we have, um, the FOB uh, entrance that we have, um, uh, as well as uh, the ability to uh, keep our students in that building all day long. So we are really excited uh, about the possibilities. We'll also be expanding uh, the threat extinguisher uh, system that we have. That's the uh, military grade pepper spray and alarm system that we installed in each of our buildings last spring. That'll be expanded uh, into all of the new space as well. I actually had a meeting this morning with Columbus Police where we shared about that uh, threat extinguisher program and they loved the idea. Uh, they, they were taking pictures of it and wanted to share it with other schools uh, that they work with. So we're excited about being able to expand that also. Secondly, uh, it brings, uh, an, uh, just like the lower school had this opportunity for expanding collaboration among faculty, we have the same opportunity now with the high school. A lot of our faculty members, be, uh, because our 7th and 8th grade were on a different campus than our high school, have had to travel from one building to the other. That really limits their opportunity to collaborate with teachers in either building. So bringing 7th, 8th grade faculty members onto uh, the same campus as uh, the rest of the upper school just really expands the collaboration uh, potential. It also allows students, it makes it much easier for our students uh, in the middle school who were taking high school level classes for credit or uh, you know any other high school level class, it will make access to those classes much easier also. Uh, I talked a little bit about this expanded media center already. We really view the media center as the hub and heart of a school. And so the ability to provide a uh, first rate environment for the media centers was really important to us in this project. Uh, we have the, the, the new and dedicated science and art space. Our current science labs are original uh, to the building and we're uh, excited about being able to provide renovated brand new science lab space, especially for our seventh and eighth graders who have never had access to true science lab space as they've been just housed in a regular classroom um, uh, up until now. So we're excited about that as well. And then while we offer interscholastic sports beginning in seventh grade, up until now, our high school has been separated from our athletic practice and competition uh, facilities. So. Uh, we will be able to eliminate the need for our students to have to leave campus after school and drive to our athletic facilities as they will be housed on now on the same campus where all of our athletic facilities are. And as I mentioned earlier, it'll give us an opportunity for some modest growth uh, at, that, um, at that level and where we think we really have a demand uh, for additional students. Now, one of the things that I know will come to, to, come to mind is the question of why do you want to house 7th and 8th grade students on the same campus as juniors and seniors? Won't that be a problem? And my answer is actually, we believe it is a great move and not just a neutral move. Uh, the research again that I'm reading is suggesting pretty strongly that um, student interaction is enhanced the larger the gap between the youngest students and the oldest students in the building. So when you have a a, uh, a building where there may only be two or three grades separating the youngest student from the oldest student, there tends to be a larger number of negative student interactions. You may call it bullying, you may call it uh, some other term. But what the research is finding, as you expand the range of students in one building, those, those number of negative interactions drop significantly. And Part of the reason that the uh, researchers are saying is that when you have that larger gap, the older students tend to take on this responsibility of caring for the younger students 
in the building. And so that tends to breed this community, family type environment. And we believe our students are going to respond to that um, you know, in droves and really uh, give us the kind of environment where our younger students are going to be able to look to our older students as role models, even as mentors uh, in the learning process. So we're actually really excited about that. Now, um, let me talk to you just a little bit about timeline uh, because uh, I'm sure that is something that, uh, that you will have questions about. So as we look to where are we at right now on the timeline, we're in April 2008. From April to December of this year, it will be our goal to continue fundraising and secure the financing uh, for the construction. Now, uh, the, fir the, the part about securing the financing, we may be able to do that within the next month. It may take longer than that. I cannot make any guarantees on when that financing can be secured. We're working with lenders now. Uh, we believe we have a good plan in place, but that's something that we don't have complete control over. And we can't break ground until we secure that financing. So that'll be one thing that I ask you to pray for. If you would join us in that, I know our faculty, our board and administration are committed to praying for that um, until uh, we're able to secure that. But between now and December, we'll also continue fundraising. So even after we secure the financing, we intend to continue to uh, solicit um, gifts uh, from friends of the school, from people who love WC. Our goal for that is an additional $500,000, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. The second step in the timeline is securing the financing. Once we do that, we are able to break ground immediately afterward uh, on the new building. Three months after uh, we secure the financing, we will put the elementary school on the market. We have already engaged with some commercial brokers uh, for that, and they believe that there is significant value locked up in that property. And uh, that would give us uh, you know, 12 months to sell that property, to take those assets and put them into the, uh, the campaign. So uh, we would do that three months. Obviously, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to sell that until we're ready to leave that. So we would need, um, you know, that would have to be uh, uh, um, some lag there uh, and wouldn't be able, we would be able to stay in that building until uh, we have the space at the new lower school. And then 12 months out from the securing of the financing and breaking ground is when we would be able to move in uh, to the new facilities. So just as one scenario, if we were able to secure the financing before this summer and break ground this summer, uh, in the fall, we would put the elementary school on the market. Uh, we would break ground this summer, put the elementary school on the market this fall, and then the summer of 2019, we would be able to move everybody into the new lower school and upper school. Now again, if the financing is not in place by then, that will all be delayed accordingly. But uh, that again, that's one thing that uh, we really are asking our school community to rally around and, and, and offer prayers over. Uh, we would certainly appreciate that. Our giving so far has been tremendous. And we have raised more money in this project than we have in the history of WC, over six and a half million dollars. Um, and I have been have been given or pledged so far. That represents uh, 548 uh, individual donors, as well as 164 donors who have made uh, a gift to the first time to WC. We want to thank everybody who's been a part of that. We know that uh, people have given sacrificially uh, to this. Whether that gift has been $500 or $500,000, uh, we know that. Uh, I'll, there have been significant sacrifices made on behalf of WC just because you love the kids who go here. And I want to thank you for that. Uh, we would not be able to do this project without the community really rallying around uh, this idea of providing uh, for uh, the WC students both today and in the next generation of students. So we are eternally grateful uh, for that. There are some remaining needs that we have, as I mentioned. We will continue, uh, even after we break ground, uh, to raise money uh, toward the project. So while we currently are in a position where we could break ground, uh, the more money, uh, additional money that we raise would allow us to do a number of things. That money would be earmarked for the playgrounds that we would have to install on both lower school buildings. So we would have a playground that would go in on the K-2 building and a playground that would go in on the 3-6 to building. It would also be earmarked for some of the renovations uh, that we're doing, mainly in the AC, uh, on the, in the lower school uh, uh, campus, as well as new furnishings uh, for the buildings as well. Um, 
If you are interested in being a part of that, we certainly invite you. Uh, and that can be done in, in a lot of different ways and in a way that hopefully brings you the joy and satisfaction of being a part of something significant in the lives of our students. That, first of all, can be done by those of you who have generously made a pledge toward the school uh, by fulfilling that pledge. We are counting on that in that $6.5 million, and that has become a much, that is, that is a small uh, portion of that $6.5 million, but nonetheless, it's an important component of it. So those of you who have uh, pledges remaining, first of all, thank you for that. And uh, we are counting really on uh, those pledges being fulfilled. Secondly, if you've made a pledge and have fulfilled it to WC already and would like to renew that pledge for another year or two years, uh, that would help us tremendously toward closing that uh, $500,000 goal that we have uh, for the rest of the, of the year. So if that is something that you're just locked into and uh, would like to continue that, uh, please just contact us, our advancement office, and let them know, and we can do that in a very simple process for you. Uh, if you've not made a pledge and you would like to make a new pledge, uh, you can do the same thing. If you just email advancement at worthingtonchristian.com, uh, we will be able to walk you through the process. That's really a simple process, uh, and nonetheless, I know that that would be a, a sacrificial gift on a lot of people's part. And so if you're interested in doing that, uh, we would love that also. Many of you remember the, uh, the big gift campaign that we had in the fall that went uh, and raised a significant amount of money toward this project. Well, if you made a gift in 2017 and you'd like to renew that gift for 2018, uh, do that. There is no big, the Columbus Foundation uh, is not sponsoring a big gift in 2018, but that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we, you can't uh, uh, give in the same way. So if you'd like to renew that gift, again, please contact our advancement office and we would be able to walk you through that process. We'll also be soliciting in-kind gifts. If you or you know or someone you know owns a business in a construction-related field that may be able to serve us in our construction uh, of the uh, new upper school, uh, drywalling, painting, plumbing, electricity, uh, furnishings, whatever, if you want to call us and um, uh, we can work something out uh, with that that would be at a discounted or even a free rate, whatever uh, you are able to do. We, we would love to have a part of that also. And then some of our families I know uh, who are Grace uh, Players Church families and receive a uh, discount uh, for their church attendance. Uh, if you would like to donate uh, that discount, we call it Donate the Discount uh, to WC, that's certainly an option too. But again, we want to provide you with opportunities to joyfully give to this. Um, and as you have that opportunity and, and want to be a part of that, we certainly welcome it and would uh, be very pleased and happy uh, to partner with you in that. About four years ago, uh, we started the initial planning for this project, and it has been a long road um, uh, since then. One of the first things that we did back then was to craft a campaign prayer that really expressed um, what our heart was in this. So we had a group of uh, parents who put this prayer together. And my, my, I want to close with this prayer tonight because it really represents what we want this project to be about. We know that uh, any, the success of anything like this comes as a result and the, the, to the extent that uh, we trust uh, God's work and hand in this, and we want to certainly honor and recognize him in this. So uh, I'll close tonight uh, with this prayer. Again, if you have questions that you would like to have, just type them in the comment section below, and uh, we will respond to you by early next week uh, as soon as we can, okay? Will you just join me uh, in this prayer tonight? Father God, how great is the love that you have lavished on us through the cross of Jesus Christ. Soften our hearts to the fullness of that truth. Unite us in one purpose as you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know you better. Thank you for the abundant blessings you've poured out upon Worthington Christian schools and our community. From the overflow of our gratitude, enable us to excel in the grace of giving to this campaign. In this response, we, may we further our mission to develop the mind of Christ in our students. We ask that you multiply our gifts to you and do more than all we could ask or imagine for your glory. In Christ's holy and precious name, amen.
Thank you for joining us tonight. Love having you be a part of the WC community. And uh, we really look forward to the completion of this project and celebrating that in the not too distant future. Have a great evening.